Pizza Tower is by far the greatest game to ever grace the earth. The game revolves around Pipino Spaghetti, an Italian pizza chef who owns a struggling pizza restaurant. One day, a mysterious antagonist named Pizza Face shows up and threatens to blow up Pipino's restaurant. The only way to prevent that would be to visit a massive tower filled with dangerous traps and enemies. Desperate to save his business, Pipino sets out on a daring mission to climb the tower, defeat Pizza Face, and save his restaurant. But what if Pipino were to fight against the Joe Stars from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Now you might think that some random Italian chef can't stand a chance against people who can literally stop time and manipulate reality, but trust me, it's literally insane how powerful Pipino truly is, as he can destroy entire planets, run at the speed of Mach 4, <laughs> quite literally decimate anything in his path. If Pepino taunts right before getting hurt, instead of taking damage, Pepino will block and parry the attack. This can kill most enemies and deflect projectiles. If he gets a combo of 10 or more and taunts, a super taunt will occur and all enemies on screen are defeated. Pepino will either have to get another combo of 10 or increase the current combo by 10 to be able to super taunt again. Not only that, Pepino also has nearly infinite durability. During his fight against Pizza Head, he slammed Pizza Head's face onto the top of the pizza tower so hard that it literally created an explosion the size of a Tomahawk air missile. And Pepino was completely unscathed. Also, Pepino destroying planets is actually canon. Because in the 11th level of Pizza Tower, Deep Dish 9, Pepino visits a grassy planet and a cheese planet. He ends up destroying both planets by the end of the level. Okay, it's time to send the Geo Stars into battle. First up, we got Jonathan Joestar. So let's see what he can do. Does he have the strength, the speed required to beat Pepino? Nope. I mean, he has Hamon, which is the power of the sun, yeah! And a sword, and um. Uh, that, that, that's it, yeah. I mean, he's probably gonna try and hit Pepino with his sword or his fists or something, and absolutely nothing is gonna happen. Pepino is probably just going to dodge it or parry it. Even if Pepino does get hit, he's probably not even going to get hurt in the slightest. So yeah, Pepino one punches Jonathan. Next up we got Joseph Joestar. Now Joseph is pretty much the exact same as Jonathan, except he's like 10% stronger and 500% smarter. Joseph may be the smartest character in the series, but that literally isn't helping him at all against Pepino. Yeah, sure, he did beat Cars, the ultimate life form, who literally can't die. That's only because Joseph got lucky. Cars literally only lost a plot armor. Best case scenario, Joseph can probably do some damage to Pipino, but there's literally no way he can win. Jodoro Kujo, our first contestant that actually has somewhat of a chance against Pipino. Star Platinum possesses superhuman strength, capable of delivering powerful punches and lifting heavy objects, and has incredible speed and precision, often performing rapid-fire punches with pinpoint accuracy. One of his most notable abilities, introduced later in the series, is Time Stop, an ability that allows him to freeze time for a brief period, initially up to 5 seconds. During this interval, everything around Jodor remains completely still, granting him the freedom to move and act without any external influence. This power provides a significant strategic advantage in combat, enabling Jodor to evade attacks, reposition himself, or launch a surprise offensive while his opponents are immobilized. So if Jodor were to fight Pepino, he would probably do some significant damage to him, but Pepino still wins. I mean, with time stop, he can get some pretty good hits on him, but Pepino's sheer durability and speed far exceeds that of Star Platinum. So yeah, Jodor loses. Okay, next up we got Josuke Higashikata. Alright, so I'ma just say it already, Josuke is cooked. If Jodoro loses to Pepino, then Josuke is just straight up cooked. Josuke is basically just a nerfed version of Jodoro without time stop. He wields a stand called Crazy Diamond, which possesses several unique abilities. The primary ability of Crazy Diamonds is Restoration. Crazy Diamond's Restoration ability allows Josuke to restore objects or living beings to their original or previous state. This power is incredibly versatile and can be used to heal injuries, repair broken or damaged objects, and revert things to their unaltered form. For instance, if someone is wounded, Crazy Diamond can heal their injuries by restoring their body to an undamaged state. Similarly, if an object is broken, Crazy Diamond can repair it by reversing the damage. 
Josuke can also use this ability creatively in combat, such as trapping enemies by restoring objects around them or disassembling or reassembling items for strategic advantage. However, one significant limitation is that Josuke cannot use this ability to heal his own injuries. So if Josuke were to fight Pepino, he would probably try and combine Pepino with another object or something. That might potentially work, but to be fair, it depends on who attacks first. Josuke is way slower compared to Jotaro, so Pepino could easily defeat Josuke before he even has a chance to attack. Josuke dies. Next up we got Giorno Giovanna. So I'm just going to be frank here, there's absolutely no way Pepino can win this. Pepino may be virtually indestructible, but Giorno Giovanna is literally one of the strongest characters in fiction. Seriously. So Giorno has a stand called Gold Experience Requiem. This stand has the ability to nullify any action or intent, effectively reverting events into a state of zero, making it impossible for opponents to affect Giorno or achieve their goals. This means that any attack or harmful action directed at Giorno is rendered meaningless, as it never happened. This power renders Giorno nearly invincible, as it allows him to control the outcome of any confrontation and neutralize any threat. So no matter what attacks Pepino throws at Giorno, those attacks will never occur simply because Gold Experience Requiem never allowed it to. So yeah, Pepino loses this one. Next up we got Jolene. So Jolene's a woman so she automatically dies. Alright, moving on to Steel Ball Run. So now we got Johnny Joestar. Tusk Act 4, the ultimate evolution of Johnny Joestar's stand, grants him unparalleled abilities linked to infinite rotation. This form allows Johnny to transcend physical limitations by creating dimensional rifts, which enable him to bypass conventional defenses and attack opponents directly through these rifts. Tusk Act 4's attacks are characterized by their overwhelming power and precision driven by the infinite rotation's energy. It embodies the concept of achieving perfect rotation where Johnny can manifest and manipulate the rifts strategically, ensuring his attacks cannot be easily anticipated or defended against. This makes Johnny Joestar an exceptionally formidable opponent, capable of altering the battlefield and securing victory through the manipulation of space and energy. Johnny's bullets will always hit Pepino and it will instantly kill Pepino because it deals infinite damage. So yeah, Pepino loses. Moving on to Jojolian, now we got Josuke Higashikata. However, this is not the same Josuke from part 4, this is a different Josuke from part 8. Okay, so Josuke is literally the strongest character in Jojo. He has a stand called Soft and Wet Go Beyond, which basically shoots a non-existent bubble at his enemies. The bubbles possess the extraordinary ability to pass through any material or barrier, enabling them to traverse intangible realms such as the internet and potentially other dimensions to reach their destination. These bubbles are essentially non-existent entities, which means they defy conventional logic and calamity. This unique nature allows them to move through stopped or erased time, and even D4C love train without being affected. Additionally, they are immune to the return to zero effect, as something that doesn't exist cannot be reverted to zero, and thus remains outside the influence of fate or calamity. If a bubble makes any contact with an enemy, it results in instant death. So yeah, Pepino loses.